uh, St. Louis Blues. All right. So uh, St. Louis TV, he asked, he says, I noticed you unsubscribed from my channel. Why was that? And then he's got another comment here saying America is Mystery Babylon. Not Jerusalem. Not. Or is Mystery Babylon. Not Rome. Not Jerusalem. Not Turkey. It's America. Washington, D.C. sits on seven hills. Okay. So that's in reference to Revelation verse 9. And of course. I'm sorry. Revelation 17 verse 9. <clears throat> the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. The problem with the idea that America is Babylon is one, it's not a religion, and uh, two, it's it's a nation, not a kingdom, not a not the beast. All right, it's powerful. There's no question about it. But at the top of the pyramid is uh, you know you've heard that phrase all lead all, all roads lead to Rome all right so at the very top is the Pope in Rome and she reigns over the kings of the earth so you take uh, Joe Biden he's the king of the United States and he's not the Antichrist and but that's not why I unsubscribed I'm not sure why I am unsubscribed so if I go to your channel I'm sure I can find some things I disagree with and that's okay too all right so it looks like you're gonna have a whole wasted hour or two talking about that and you're gonna have all kinds of troubles um, when it comes to every single verse in Revelation 17 which matches exactly with the Roman Catholic Church and uh, then of course you have to ignore the book of Daniel and the four beasts to the end time which is what this is based on <clears throat> excuse me um and upon her f forehead was a name written mystery Babylon the great so this has to be in spirit with the very first beast which is the king of Babylon and Daniel <clears throat> he he mentions the first three beasts Babylon Medes and Persians and Greeks and then the fourth beast is not mentioned but we can deduce that it is the Roman Empire if we read Luke chapter 2 verse 1 when it says Caesar decreed that the whole world be taxed all right so all the world should be taxed Caesar Augustus there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed so we can deduce by this that the fourth beast without any doubt is the Roman Empire and then of course we read the beast that was and is not and yet is we can connect the dots and figure out and realize that the Roman Empire transitioned into the Roman Catholic Church and it makes perfect sense because now she is a woman who masquerades herself as the wife or bride of Christ but she is not the bride of Christ and this goes back to Matthew 16 of course uh, the whole Catholic religion is dependent on Matthew 16 when Jesus asked whom do you say or yeah whom do men say that I am and then he asked uh, uh, let's see whom do men say that I the Son of Man am and they said some say Thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, some other, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, and he saith unto them, But whom say ye <clears throat> that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what the church is built on. 
But the Catholics will say, no, it's built on Peter. And they'll call Peter the first pope. And isn't it interesting that just a few verses later, Jesus calls Peter, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. So we can deduce that the church of, uh, you know, the Roman Catholic Church is built on Satan. Right? And then, of course, we read in the book of Revelation that the Roman Catholic Church gets their power from Satan. And the dragon being um, Satan and the devil. All right, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. All right, and they worship the dragon, which gave power under the beast. So the Satan gives power to the Roman Empire, which is now the Roman Catholic Church. So, anyways, it all makes sense when you go and try to say, "Well, this is America." Um, <clears throat> you're gonna have all kinds of problems. All kinds of problems and and I want to emphasize this point to Daniel Daniel gives some some great uh, clues for who oh uh, who the fourth beast is one that uh, she's gonna be richer than all the other beasts they're gonna be phenomenal phenomenally uh, wealthy and of course today nobody knows exactly how wealthy the Roman Catholic Church is and of course have you ever wondered you know, who is Mrs. Pope well they don't have a Mrs. Pope they have no desire of women there's never been a Mrs. Pope there's not any desire for women and the fact that they do not regard any god, for they magnify them. Him, he magnifies himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God. Yeah, let's read that verse in First or Second Thessalonians two, verse four. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God and of course Pope is a word a Latin word that means Holy Father and hold the Holy Father is God Almighty and it's not the Pope alright but he pretends to be the Pope and we could see like um, other examples here I mean we could do this all day really Go to Isaiah. O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, that dwelleth between the cherubims. That dwelleth between the cherubims. Now, let's see if we can do this here. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God there we go <laughs> isn't that interesting so there's the cherubims there's the Holy Father is that what you believe right there you got the cherubims and you got the Holy Father God Almighty right there I mean everything fits man you're not getting this from Joe Biden I mean you really think <laughs> I mean, come on. But, I mean, I get it. That's what false teachers teach, and and that's what happens. But I think maybe, uh, part, you know, the regardless of all that, man, regardless of all that, so you got a, you got a big problem here. <clears throat> and if I can find it here, yeah, I'd, honestly, I don't know why I am subscribed. I just don't remember it, that's all. But we got a problem here. We can't talk about the Bible. Why can't me and you have a discussion about the things in the Bible? Well, 
Let's see here. All right, that's that's a problem right there. Let's see if I can find. All right, well, hold on a second. <clears throat> I gotta find it here. Hold on, all right, there it is. Okay, right there. We've got a problem right here because um, you don't believe in any Bible at all. So, in a essence, you're making yourself as the authority on the Word of God because you don't have any Bible. You don't have a perfect Bible you can point to as the foundation for the truth of the Word of God. Now, I do, and it's the King James Bible. It's from God. It's not from men. It's not a translation, it's not a version, it is the Bible, the Word of God. And, you know, of course, uh, every word of God is pure. And, like Jesus says, the scripture cannot be broken. Alright, the words of the Lord are pure words, the silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. All right, and <clears throat> and one, you know, one thing you go sort of flip that around here. You'll, I mean, this is not a new thing. This has been happening uh, at all. Every, you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden when the serpent said to Eve, "Yea, has God said?" getting her to doubt the Word of God and that's exactly what these new versions do and of course uh, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 17 uh, for we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God and of course we see that more today now than ever before this idea that it's impossible to corrupt the Word of God anybody that that teaches that I, <laughs> It's very obvious they've never collated the different Bible versions, and there's 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 no way you can reconcile one Bible version with an, another Bible version. And in fact, you see all these Bible versions that in themselves they have contradictions. They contradict themselves. I mean, it, we can even use this right here just as one example. All right, so we can go. You know, Second Corinthians two seventeen. Let's go to the Christian Standard Bible. For we do not market the Word of God for profit, and yet they do. And so, right there is a contradiction and a lie within the its Bible. It's and it's within its Bible version. All within itself, it's a lie. So because it has one error, you have to throw that Bible out, throw it in the garbage where it belongs. All right, it's no good. If it's got one bad verse, the whole thing is bad. All right, and you got one really bad verse, and they're not basing this off nothing but copyright laws. And they want to dismiss this idea that it's possible to corrupt the Bible, and they're taking advantage of people that don't read and study their Bible. And people are falling for it. We aren't so, we aren't like so many who hustle the Word of God. Uh, yet they are. They're hustling the Word of God. They're trying. Their their versions are based solely on copyright laws. You've heard that. Well, a lot of these versions will base their translation on the oldest and latest, or the oldest and greatest. Manuscripts? No, I don't believe that at all. Because if that were true, then they would have to omit entire books out of their translation. They're not basing their translation on that at all. It's solely based on copyright laws so they can sell their books and make their money. And peddlers, we, for we are not like so many peddlers of God's word, yet they are peddling their Bible version. All right, and they're changing the Word of God. It's incredible. So anyways, you and look, the fact is, you cannot have 
a discussion with somebody that does not believe in any Bible anywhere on earth. So what do you say? You can't say, well, this, the Word of God says this, because you don't have anything to point to. All right? So that's a big problem. So, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, you commenting, and uh, I'd certainly appreciate you wanting to have a conversation. It's just impossible to have a conversation about the things in the Bible with a person that does not believe in any Bible whatsoever. And, you know, if you're honest, you'll admit that you got the gospel right. So the next step is finding the foundation, the true Word of God. Where's it at? Where's the Bible at? Um, it, you know, you can't point to for, you know, foreign languages aren't the Bible. They're languages. So you can't point to Hebrew and Greek because those are languages. You got to point to a specific Bible and say this is the true Word of God. And <clears throat> so when you find it, let me know. And it's not the CSB, I guarantee you that. And we go to, you know, it, CSB might be your favorite Bible version, but look at, look at this here. Oops. Take a look at this here. For the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. Let's go do it this way. If it's possible. I don't know what's going on here. There we go. Christian Standard Bible. So 18, this will represent 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. Imagine you're a little kid and you you can count to 20, you know. It's a big deal if you can count to 10, but if you can count to 20, man, you're really starting to figure stuff out. So imagine you're a little kid. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. There's no 11. A little kid can figure this out they removed a verse. And of course, what verse did they remove? <laughs> Look, this is, this should be easy to see. And it really takes some, some, uh, you know, beguiling to get somebody to see that and say, ah, that's no big deal because, well, the footnote, you know, I call these the serpent's notes. All right, let's, what, what was that, D? Let's see what it says, D. Let's go to D for dumb. Some manuscripts include verse 11. Well, yeah, some manuscripts that do not include verse 11 do not include entire books of the Bible. So you're picking and choosing whatever you want. And, and it's not based on any one manuscript it's not based on anything but their own selection and the fact that they've removed it should be telling why would you remove for the son of man has come to save that which was lost it's incredible now those verse <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense to go from 10 to 12 now who puts those verses in there who puts the chapters in there does that come from God or does that come from man? You've heard people say, well, those those were put in later. No, well, if they were put in later, later than what? I don't know, but regardless, they're put in there by God Almighty. Every word of the Bible is, and every number of the Bible is from God. In Acts 13, verse 33, God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, 
in that he has raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now is that true? You gotta prove all things and hold fast to that which is true. Right? Verse seven, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. The second psalm. So, there's no doubt in my mind that this whole thing is, is from God. The whole thing is inspired from God. And it's, it's incredible, really. You believe that God can part the Red Sea. God can raise the dead. But God can't give us a Bible that we can trust in. And First Peter 1, chapter 25, but the war, so let's read this here. Hold on a second. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And then, of course, we can go to. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So where can I find the word of God? It's very important. You know, it says, study to show thyself approved. A good workman needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, where can I find the word of truth? And of course, we read in Deuteronomy, Matthew, and Mark. Uh, let's see, let's do it this way. I'm not sure, did I do that right? Oh, heck, no, that, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong thing. got to think about this one now. All right, Deuteronomy 8, <clears throat> but by every word, man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. And of course we can go to, uh, is that not in Mark? Excuse me if it's not. It doesn't matter. It's in Matthew. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread only alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I just wonder, doesn't matter, I'm wasting time here. Doesn't matter, who cares? And of course Jesus is that bread that comes down from heaven, right? He is the Word of God in heaven. The Bible is the Word of God on earth. And that we cannot live by bread only, but by every word of God. And of course, if you don't have a true Bible, then how can you say that God says anything? And uh, there's one more thing I want to look at here. You know, there's all these go-to verses I, I look to. So we can go to uh, Isaiah 14, 12. It's the only time Lucifer is mentioned. And the Christian Standard Bible, as I suspected, never mentions... Never mentions Lucifer at all. Isn't that weird? I just find that so weird. Why would you take Lucifer out of there? And of course, Lucifer is crucial. Uh, crucial. In my opinion, very strong opinion, this is a clue for who the Antichrist is today. Now, if you understand uh, Isaiah 14, you know this is a proverb concerning the king of Babylon. Of course, in Revelation 17, 
and upon her forehead was a name written Babylon the Great so in the spirit of Lucifer is the the fourth beast or the beast of revelation all right and then um what's interesting here is Lucifer is a Latin word and this word is mentioned uh, just the one time in the entire Bible and and there's only one country in the entire world that speaks Latin as its native tongue can you guess who it is yeah it's Vatican City and uh, you, you know look it's a clue it's telling you right there and they knew it back in 1604 1611 they knew who the Antichrist was the Pope or I'm sorry the Roman Catholic Church knew that these guys know that they are the Antichrist this is not a secret this is not a new thing this is something that has been very well known that the Roman Catholic Church has tried to exert their power over the Christians and to do dominate and uh, and uh, to overtake the religion you can't outdo Jesus but they can masquerade themselves as Jesus and of course we read you know the parable of the wheat and tear and what's interesting is the tares look exactly like the wheat All right, I'm going long on this right so if you understand how the enemy has come and sowed tares among the wheat that's exactly what the is happening here with the Roman Catholic Church they are trying to tares are also called false wheat they look exactly like wheat well, the difference is uh, come harvest the wheat turns golden brown and the tares its seeds turn black and become poisonous All right. and of course this is the way it's supposed to be now because fewer and fewer people are seeing it today the more power uh, it is given to the Roman Catholic Church uh, except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition so uh, the deception is getting worse and worse and worse all right What's going on here? Hold on a second. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And we're seeing that more today than ever before. That's why I say it's harder than ever for anybody to get saved. It's a miracle that anybody gets saved in today's world. And to sort of hammer this home let's see if I can find a verse here I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man comes shall he find faith on earth question mark you don't ask that question if there's gonna be overwhelming number of people saved the fact of the matter is we're getting closer and closer to the end and there's fewer and fewer people being saved and in fact the reason um, one of the reasons why uh, the end of the world comes is because if God had not shortened those days there should no flesh be saved All right. Okay, let's go to Matthew here and except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened and except the, that the Lord had shortened those days no flesh should be saved but for the elect's sake whom he has chosen he has shortened the days 
And another key verse here, whom he has chosen. You have not chosen him, he has chosen you. You can't save yourself, only God can save you. It's not by your righteousness, it's by his righteousness. And this is one thing that St. Louis absolutely has. He's on the right track. All right, and so to me it just, this tells me this, this guy here, he's got the gospel. He's got it. Now we just have to give him time to let the spirit work in him and let him guide him to the truth. All right, this just takes time. You got to read, you got to study. And I'm going to tell you, man, the key or the secret to understanding the Bible, it is not listening to false preachers. All right, don't get your knowledge and wisdom from from other preachers. All right. Uh, especially the false ones and how are you gonna know which ones are false and which ones are not well uh, again I'm gonna tell you this the key the secret to learning the Bible is faith very important you have to have faith without it you won't know nothing we can read in let's go to 2nd Corinthians but even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart why because they do not believe nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord when it shall have faith when it shall when they shall believe the veil shall be taken away now this is very important you've got to believe the Bible you hold in your hands is from God. It's from God to you and for you. Faith, man. That's always that's it's always been about faith. We go to Hebrews 11 and see that righteousness. Here, and why not? Let's do it that way. All right, so. Being by faith, Noah being warned of God, things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared a mark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. It's always been about faith, man. And without faith, you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to learn, you're not going to be able to have uh, wisdom and uh, the true knowledge of God. It's always been about faith, man. You got to believe the Bible you hold in your hands, and there's no way in hell that the CSB is a perfect Bible. All right, you're kidding yourself if you think that. You haven't hardly even looked at the thing. And um, so, what is the foundation? What is the one thing you can point to and say this is the perfect, pure Word of God? Otherwise, you're left with your own imagination and you become your own authority. Well, you can't trust what that says. You've got to trust what I say. You're essentially making yourself the Word of God. And believe me, you're not God. So, no, I appreciate it. If you want to further this, converse, this conversation, let's do it. But it's no wonder you're getting all these other things wrong. And then, of course, I want to read this comment here. Richie Jacobs, I went back to see how Steven Anderson explains Revelation 20 because I used to watch his videos. No wonder I was still confused after learning it from him. He has the rapture first, and then Jane, uh, Jesus reigning from Jerusalem for a thousand years. Then Jesus comes back for judgment. <laughs> I want to talk about that. But they're still unsaved getting saved during the thousand years and there's two resurrections first at the beginning of the thousand years then at the end well that's essentially saying there's three resurrections first Jesus Christ because he leads the way and then this idea of a you know a thousand year zombie reign uh, you got a, a second resurrection and then at the end of it you got a third resurrection I don't know you resurrecting zombies or something I'm not sure what's happening uh, and they don't talk about it enough to really give a clear idea of what's happening there. 
Now, now they, this is, he's getting this from a, a preacher. Maybe he got it uh, as a kid growing up or something. And because I'm telling you, that's everybody's getting it from a false teacher. They're not getting it from the Bible. They're not using logic, and they're not thinking about what they're teaching. Uh, may, I, don't, I don't know. How can you reach these people? I don't know if it's possible, but think about this. You've got Jesus reigning in Jerusalem. Apparently, Jesus was not reigning before. And so you got to take your magic marker, and you got to cross out Luke chapter 1 verse 33 alright get your magic marker out turn to your Bible Luke chapter 1 verse 33 now you gotta just take your magic marker and wipe that off there just blacken that out because that verse right there destroys the idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years that that one alone I mean we could go to other ones but it, there's not a clear in my opinion there's not a clear Bible verse that utterly destroys the idea of Jesus reigning a thousand years. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So you got two sides to this. You've got well, Jesus wasn't reigning before and now all of a sudden he's reigning for this thousand years and then at the end he stops reigning. All right, okay, that's that's one nonsense, you know, one one thing that just doesn't make any sense. And then the other thing that doesn't make sense is you got Jesus on in Jerusalem, on Earth reigning, and then simultaneously you have him coming in the clouds of heaven. Well, there's no mention of him taking off. Hey, I'm going to take off for a minute and I'll be right back. Well, that You know, he's going to come right back. That's what he says all throughout the Bible. He promises to come back. But there's no mention of him coming back, going away, and coming back a third time. The problem, in my opinion, people are not connecting the dots. They're not trying to simplify it the Bible. And the Bible is very simple. You just have to connect the dots. It's not rocket science, man. What happens is when you fail to connect the dots, then you got two resurrections. You got three comings of the Lord Jesus Christ. You got some people have Jesus Christ coming over 20 times. You got all these dispensational periods and next thing you know you're a, a Muslim or a Mormon because that's what they're teaching well Jesus Christ was good for that time but now we need Joseph Smith or now we need Muhammad to tell us the truth and I don't want to get into all that nonsense but <laughs> it's people that are unable to connect the dots and it goes back to the veil being over their heart because they lack faith Right, and so uh, all it takes is simple faith. Believe if you believe that the Bible you hold in your hands is from God, this ought to be very easy to see. That Revelation 20 makes no mention at all of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. Just never mind the idea that it's nonsensical. The fact of the matter is, it never says Jesus reigns a thousand years. It's talking about we that are saved reign with him right and we reign with him right now. If Jesus Christ does not reign in your life right now, how can you rightly say you are saved? And did you catch what I just pointed out there? I'll go right back to it. First Peter chapter two, verse nine, but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people. He's not talking about Jews. He's not talking about a people in, in the thousand years, uh, in the future. 
right? Now he's talking about right now. Right now, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. And then, of course, here in verse 6, they shall be priests of God and of Christ. We are priests of God and of Christ right now. We are told to go and preach the gospel to every creature. We are, you know, we are priests of God. We're preaching the gospel to everybody. And, uh, of course, uh, all right there. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We are priests of God. And what is the gospel? Well, you know, it's all over the Bible. But let's finish it on this. What must I do to be saved? That's a great question, isn't it? Wow, that exact question is asked in the Bible. Acts 16, verse 30. What must I do to be saved? Let's see what the answer is, because this is a big deal. And the answer is, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Like I said before, man, it's about faith. It's always been about faith. 